Hi, this is Tom Hoskins for Mining Journal. I'm here with Robin Dunbar, who's the CEO of Grid Metals, which is a Toronto-listed battery metals-focused exploration development company with properties in Manitoba and Ontario. Hi, Robin. How's it going? Yes, good morning, Tom. Uh, it's nice to be with the Mining Journal today. Thank you. Yeah, likewise. Um, so let's get straight into it. For our viewers who are not familiar with your company, could you start by just giving us a quick overview of what you're about? Grid Metals is a Canadian-focused uh, exploration and development company. We're in the province of Manitoba, and we're focused on the battery metals, particularly nickel and lithium. Our assets are at the exploration and development stage. Okay, great. So you mentioned, yeah, you're drawn to this battery metal space. Clearly, there's been a lot of hype around that um, last couple of years, and a lot of junior miners putting themselves in positions not too dissimilar to yours. How, how are you differentiating yourself, and, and why did you go down this path of battery metals? You know, you're right. There has been a lot of hype around the battery metal space uh, in the recent years. Um, we think there's strong fundamentals for that hype, but... Um, you know, what, what we think is our assets are uh, very good assets that uh, we think can be uh, developed into uh, economic uh, properties. And uh, that's our focus at GRID. And uh, we think we're making a lot of progress towards this. Okay, great. I just want to dig in a little bit more to what you've been up to recently. What key milestones did you check off in 2022? And what are you aiming to hit in 2023? Our lithium project, the Donner Lake Lithium Project, uh, we're currently drilling off a resource. We've identified two uh, pegmatite dikes that uh, we've drilled a number of holes into now, and we will continue until we have enough uh, coverage to calculate an initial resource. And we're also completing uh, metallurgy and other uh, key aspects of the project. And we've uh, completed a toll milling uh, agreement with uh, the Tanko Mine, an MOU, which will... Uh, investigate the opportunity to toll mill our ore at the Tanko mine. And Tanko is the only producing lithium mine in Canada, and they're located right next door to us in Manitoba. So it's a huge advantage for us. On the nickel side, we have uh, currently about $4 billion in two open pits of metal that's been defined. We did a PEA on the project in 2014, and we've been back at it drilling, and we hope to uh, announce uh, an expanded resource later uh, in 2023. Uh, for that project. Perfect. Thank you very much, Robin. Um, maybe let's turn to the financial health of the business now. Um, do you need to be going out to the market anytime soon? How are you set? Uh, financially, um, you know, we're in good shape. We've uh, we've got about $10 million of working capital right now. Um, we, our last raise we was out of Australia. Uh, we had a lot of interest. We had some big investors come in. Um, institutional investors. And, and so we think the company's pretty well supported in that uh, respect. And, um, you know, we, we will look at uh, uh, trying to spend our money productively that we have right now um, and, and look at uh, financing perhaps uh, later this year um, for our 2024 activities. Okay, fantastic. Um, so I just want to turn now to the regulatory environment for critical minerals exploration and development in North America, um, particularly following the Inflation Reduction Act. It feels like things are heading in the right direction now. Maybe you could expand on that. Yes, the regulatory environment, uh, obviously very important. Um, you know, I think we tick a lot of the boxes. So Canada is, is uh, a tier one jurisdiction for mining. Um, Manitoba is a province that has a, a quite a mining history uh, for um, both base metals and lithium. And um, it's also a very uh, quality jurisdiction for ESG with uh, most of the power in, uh, produced in the province as uh, green power hydroelectric. So it's a very uh, good jurisdiction. Um, the key uh, things for us there are our relations with the uh, First Nations and the government, which uh, are going well. And we've been able to get our permits for uh, drilling and exploration. And, and now we're um, in the process of uh, our advanced exploration permit. So that'll be uh, uh, a key test for us in terms of the, um, you know, how friendly the jurisdiction is. So, you know, the proof's in the pudding there, but to overall uh, a great place to mine. And again, we're, we're we have the uh, benefit of a really good infrastructure so we can drive out to the site and the workers can drive there and go home at night. Um, so, you know, that's uh, it's just a good place to be. 
macro in North America, the um, Inflation Reduction Act, which was passed by the, the Biden administration, um, you know, in a nutshell, really increases the demand for battery metals that are produced in North America. So nickel and uh, lithium, um, obviously two very important ones. And Canada is, is termed as a domestic uh, jurisdiction um, in the in the act. So um, by that, I mean, you know, if you produce metals in, in Canada, it counts as if they are produced in the U.S. as a because Canada is a favorable trading nation. So it's a great place to be. We think, uh, you know, it's going to impact the attractiveness of metals that are produced in North America. And we're already seeing a lot of interest from you know, battery makers, automakers that, that are looking to secure long term sources of supply in North America. So this is a very uh, favorable uh, regulatory uh, development in the last couple of years for us. Yes, and and on the nickel uh, project, you know, our goal once we have a uh, a larger resource defined is to is to really push the uh, the project until we have um, our target is uh, two hundred thousand tons of contained nickel and other uh, metals, copper, PGMs, cobalt, and we think this uh, that's the level at which uh, the project you know starts to get uh, real attention from the industry and uh, gives it kind of the critical mass, and we think we can get there. Uh, with our land holdings, uh, our, through exploration, and maybe some ac- acquisitions we're working on as well. So we think that's a, a real um, a target for us this year. Uh, nickel, we think the fundamentals are really good for um, you know demand for uh, battery use. So you know the project is uh, you know we've come a long way, uh, but we still have further to go. But uh, you know we've got a great running start. The lithium, you know, we just started that project in, in 2022, really, in terms of our drilling. We're making excellent progress in terms of the, the drilling for a resource. Um, you know, we want to uh, complete metallurgy. Um, we, you know, we're well advanced on that to show that the, the lithium will, will be recoverable. Uh, and then on the project development side, we're in the process of uh, putting together an advanced exploration permit, which uh, we're going to submit um, in the in the first quarter this year. And, and that... Uh, will give us the uh, opportunity to uh, complete a bulk sample um, at the, again at the Tanko mine to to, sh- uh, to show that you know there's good potential for commercial recovery and to help move along the um, potential agreement with Tanko to uh, to mine uh, uh, ore from our property and and mill it at their uh, mill and and that's kind of unique because that would enable us to get in production sooner and not have to build uh, initially uh, a plant, which, you know, could cost in the range of 150 to $200 million for a, a plant and take, you know, time and, and, and uh, for permitting. And uh, it's just a much more lengthy process than, than toll milling. And we wanted to try to get into production sooner with the toll milling because the price of uh, lithium um, is so high right now. And we think it, you know, has a good chance of staying high for a number of years and it would be, um, Fantastic to take advantage of that because the the value of the rock currently is is uh, so high. So that's really uh you know we think we have a clear strategy for both projects. The reason, just I might add, we're, that what we're working on both projects is that they're right next to each other, uh, about 150 kilometers east of uh, Winnipeg, very accessible area, and uh, it's a um, a very uh, well known area uh, for lithium hosting the Tanko mine which is, you know, one, one of the really well-known uh, lithium bearing pegmatites uh, globally. And the Tanko mine has operated there for many years. And we came in and, and, and did quite a bit of work in, in, in the nickel and base metals as well. So um, there's, there could be some real synergies in trying to develop uh, both those projects in the, in the same area, make it a real battery metals hub. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Well, sadly, that's all we have time for today. Um, but yeah, I'd just like to thank you very much indeed for joining us. Yes, uh, it's been great to uh, give you a quick overview. And, uh, you know, we look forward to the conference and talking to uh, those investors who are going to be there and are interested in what uh, Grid Metals is doing. Um, we think it's going to be some exciting years ahead for uh, for the industry and for our company. Not at all. Well, hopefully we'll catch up again before too long. But for now, that concludes this video for Mining Journal. Goodbye. <laughs>